Yo, what's up y'all? Welcome back to our hide and seek game series. So in our last video, we weren't able to achieve all of our goals that we had. So let's get right into reviewing. So what we did last round, we made it where our player here, he'll get into the game, he can run around. And in a moment, this player here, who will also get spawned in as the seeker. And when he's a seeker, he'll be able to run free. He has the ball around him. We can see here we run the tag player too. He'll get frozen for a few seconds. And after a minute, there will be an explosion. And then we'll both get taken back to spawn as the game has ended. And we can see this in our server where it says game started. Player one has been chosen to be the seeker. Then player two has been tagged by player one. And what this right here means is that they're getting removed from the game. So the game's restarting and round over intermission. So now that we're back in studio, what I'd like to start with is cleaning up our old scripts from last episode, which can begin by taking all of these and making them the same for every script. So just take this, paste this here, go into the tag handler, paste this here. So now all of our scripts should have the same services already called to them. We won't have to go back and call them over and over again. So another thing I wanted to do, when I was looking back, I realized that we set the debounce after the ball was already touched. There's no point of this at all, unless we go back and we put this out of the script. And now that we've got all that out of the way, we can make a few changes to our scripts. So one thing I wanted to do, I wanted to go ahead and make the tag radius invisible so you can't see it when you're walking around as the seeker. So how we do this is very simple. We just want to go to extra commands, Whenever it gives them the tag radius right here, we go here. Instead of 0.8, we'll just set this to one. So now it's completely invisible instead of just 80% invisible. And another thing I wanted to do is exit out of extra commands, go to main. We see right here that it's just repeatedly waiting and not doing anything else until the number of hiders is zero. So not only does this not check for seekers who may leave the game, but it also can't, ch there's no way for it to possibly check if there's a timer that runs out, if there's a special event where the round may end early, for example, if players hit all their obstacles. So we can change this to while task.wait do, and we put it in right here. So can fix our formatting. And now what we can do is we can make a winners folder can just put this here we can put local winner is nothing for now and then if number of player folder get children is zero so if no hiders remain in the game then winner will be seekers else if number of seeker folder or can chosen folder get children is zero then the winner will be the hiders because no seeker remains. Maybe they all left. Or when we change this, it can also be the timer ran out. And since I want to make it worth it's the timer ran out, I might as well just do this. I'll end the game here as well. So now what we can do is we can also make a value that says local over is false. And then over here, if the game is over, if over is true, then we run this function, we end it here, and we fix our format. So just to look over, if the game's over, then all this will happen. If our player folder or our hider folder has no people left, if every hider's gone, then it will set the winner as the seekers and the game will be over. And if a chosen folder or our seeker folder has no players remaining, so if all the seekers left or died, then the winner will be the hiders and the game is over. So now if over is true, we want to print winner has won the game. Or we could actually put the winner. So it would be the seekers have won the game, the hiders have won the game. Now we can go in and test this all out. So now that we're in the game, we see our player two, our player one here actually, has been chosen as the hider. He can run around, he can be free. Blend in with Robert. 
And our player two here, he's the seeker. We can have him here. We can go tag player one. Looking at it from the server, we see the game started. Player two is our seeker. Player one was tagged. And the seekers have won the game. And this will play on repeat. The hiders haven't won the game, but since technically there's no people left in any folder, it will check the, the seeker folder last, so it will automatically update. Since there's no ending to the while wait do, this will just literally repeat over and over again to probably crash the game. So to change this, first what we want to do is break. So if the game's over, once it does everything, it'll break close out of this so this is closed and then it'll round over intermission and it'll restart another thing we can do we go down here change this weight right here to 0.5 just to make sure if anything does go wrong our game won't crash it will only check every 0.5 seconds or two times a second now that we're in the server we see player two here he's our hider he can run around and once player one spawns in our seeker he can come here so we can tag him but we see that right here in the server something goes wrong and it instantly ends the round so to fix this we can go in our main script what happened is that we put this break right here this is outside of the if over check so if we click here to close this function then we see that the function ends right here and the break is outside of that so simply to fix it we just cut the break Click this back open, we put the break one end down, and then we remove this, and we should be good to test. So now from the server, we see that the game started. We have our hider here, player two. We wait for a moment for player one to come back into the game. He spawns in, he will be it. So his radius is invisible. We can see right here that he still has it. If we set it to zero, he still has it. Put it back to one. So if we go here with player one, we go and tag player two. He'll freeze for a moment. And once he explodes, they should both get teleported back to spawn. The seekers have won the game. Player one and player two were deleted from the server files from the player folders. And now the game restarts. We see player two here is hider. So once that all this happens, we can tag the player again. He freezes and this will restart over and over again. So now one final thing I want to do before we get to the main point of this video. When they are set as a seeker, what I want to do, local highlight creates a new highlight in the character of the seeker. In this color, what we can do, we can make a part. And with this part, we can insert a highlight. We see here it has a red fill color and a white outline. We can see it through walls, through the floor. We come here, we can change the transparency to the 0 0.9, 0 0.8. What we can do, we can set this outline color to red. So now we see the it from anywhere across the map. Say we go behind this wall here, we can see the it right here. So now that we know this, we can go to our highlight. We can set the fill transparency to 0 0.85. And we can set the outline color color 3 dot from rgb 25500 so now whenever a seeker is added to the server they'll be given a highlight so they're distinguishable so now we can test this out so now on the server we see player two here and we see our player one who's it we can see he has a tag radius we also see he has a highlight so we go behind this wall we can still see him and if you were to move around we can see everything he does through the wall from this server so lastly what we need to do we need to go to main and somewhere in this script up here we need to see if any player leaves the game or if in the folders right here where we have hiders and seekers if someone's there that's not in the player folder what it does is it removes them so what we will do we'll go through every player in the players list and if someone's here that's not in there then it will be removed and then we can check if these folders have zero players so what we're going to do we're going to set this over to, to be the first thing in the script then we go down we do for a b and pairs player folder 
get children do we go through this so for every player if players find first child b dot name equals equals nil so if there's no player in the player list who has the same name is the player that we found in this folder and what we'll do we'll destroy them out of the folder and we'll print player has left the game as a contestant so now we do we drop this down we can just copy this over paste it and put this for chosen folder instead so it will go through all the hiders all the seekers and then after that it will go through the number of total players that we have and if there any folder is equal to zero so if there's no hiders or no seekers what it will do it will set the winner it will set the game to over so once the game's over all of this will happen it will break out of this while wait loop and it'll go down here to round over and it will restart the game everything will be back to normal and we can continue playing let's test so now in testing we see player one right here he will be our hider and we see player two our seeker that has the seeker highlight around him so we can see him we can see him through robert we can see him through the wall right here and what we can do with this player now we can go ahead and leave the game so what we see here player one he left the game while being in the contest while being in the game so what happens now the seekers have won the game because the hider left so we say player two right here is getting removed from the game list round over intermission and what it does it restarts because right now we only have the check for players if the game is just starting if the server is just starting if people are just now joining so now what we need to do, we need to check every single time if there are at least two players in the game before the game will start. So what we can do is, we can go to our main script, we're right here, it waits until at least two players are in the game, and it only does this once. So what we can do, we can take this, and we can go right here into our loop, and make it where the loop will not start until at least two players are in the game. So once the server loads, once people join for the first time, after five seconds, it will begin this loop, but this loop from here on will only start after this function's path, where there needs to be at least two players in the game. So now we can test this out. So now that we're here in the game, we see player two, he's our hider. Once player one comes in, we'll see that he's given the highlight. And what we can do, just to change it up, we can leave with the seeker instead of the hider to see if it makes the hiders win. So now here in the server, what happens? Player one has left the game as a contestant. He was our seeker. So what happens is the hiders have won the game, but the game goes to round over and he does not get taken to spawn. He does not get removed from the folder list. So I believe what happened here is that since we checked if the seekers are in the game still and we removed them from the game, we never checked if the hiders were still in the game and we never removed them. So to fix this, for now what we can do, we see right here, when the player leaves the game, so this is all that happens if the player is a hider. So what we can do, we can just take this, go up here, to where if over is true, local function, remove player, player, and we'll just take this here. So here we see that B is actually our player, so we can remove player and instead set this to B. So now what happens if the seeker folder has any people in it, what we'll do, we'll remove the player B. Now also, for A, B, and pairs, player folder, get children, we can just remove the player B. And since in here, we see that if they have a tag radius that gets destroyed, what we can do is if C character find first child, tag radius doesn't equal nil then so what this will do it'll make sure that this does not pass an error as our hiders will obviously not have a tag radius they won't have the ability to tag so now if only if they have a tag radius will it attempt to destroy it so also another thing i noticed while i was testing is that 
we need to check if the highlight is in the player. So if they have a tag radius, it will destroy the tag radius. And then if the character has a highlight, then we want to destroy that as well. So we get to copy this and destroy this as well. So now we're here in the game. We see that we have our seeker right here. We can run up, we can get tagged. And what happens is when the game ends, we return to spawn, our highlights get removed, and then we get teleported right back into the game. So this is our seeker. What we'll do, we'll leave the game. So we see here, player one leaves the game as a contestant. So he was our seeker, he left the game. So the hiders win. And what we see here, player two is removed from the game files as a hider. So the game ends, there's no players left. It goes back to intermission. And we see that we have our player two here at spawn. All right, y'all. So we made it where the seeker now has a highlight around him so we can see the seeker. We remove the tag radius from them and replaced it with this highlight. We finally fixed the issue of when players leave, the game will continue even though they're not in the game. We also made the round end when hiders or seekers are not here. So that should do it for today's episode, y'all. See y'all in the next video.